How to start your real estate business in 10 simple steps. Ken Van Lu, number one international best-selling author of the Modern Wealth Building Formula. Thank you so much. Please smash that like button and thank you so much for your comments. Subscribe to my channel. It's just been great with the feedback you're giving me. I really, really appreciate it. Let's get started on this today. So the first thing that you want to do in starting your own real estate business is to establish your goals. Now goals just aren't financial goals. Goals are lifestyle. Goals are what you want to achieve. Milestones. They're financial. Lifestyle. Corporation. Do you want to have your own company? Do you want to work for yourself? Do you want to have a partnership? All of these are goals that you have to lay out. You can't just start out by going, yeah, I want to make a million dollars. Making a million dollars is great, but not having a happy life, the million dollars doesn't do anything for you. So you want to lay out your goals. You want to write out your goals. You want to manifest your goals by creating a vision. When you identify your goals in writing, I recommend creating a vision board. If you want to build skyscrapers, you put skyscrapers on there. If you want to buy 100 homes, you show 100 homes. You want to buy multifamily, you put the vision of the multifamily. Whatever you want to achieve, you want a fancy car, you want a nice watch, that's what you put in your vision. And that is key. That is step number one. If you're not clear on your goals and vision, you will not have the clarity and leverage to move forward. What's the second step? The second step is criteria. What is the criteria? What do I mean by criteria? Criteria is a word. Criteria is like my finger. This could be a finger, or if I'm pointing at you, it could be a pointer, or it could be a body part. It depends on the context of the criteria. Criteria can be, if you're buying a house for your family, is there a good school system? Is there transportation to New York City where I work? That's a criteria that you have in place when you're buying a house for your family. Nice neighborhood, good school system, low taxes. That's one criteria. Another criteria may be your investment criteria. You may want to make 10% on your investment. That may be your minimum criteria. You may have a higher criteria for your personal investing. That's just one type of criteria, just like my finger could be number one or it could be a body part. That's your own personal criteria. Then there may be your investor's criteria, which your investor may have a criteria, which then is going to have an investment criteria to meet both his criteria and your criteria. You can't take an investment and bring in an investor unless it has a certain rate of return. So for example, you may have a rule of thumb or a specific criteria for a project that you're going to invest in in yourself. You may have a specific criteria that you're going to have when you bring in an investor and that is step number two, criteria. Step three is market. Market is like an ice cream store. There's 35 different flavors. You gotta see what you like. Market type, real estate type. Are you an industrial tycoon? Are you in retail? Do you have a business that may support your real estate? There's a bunch of different factors. Everybody wants to get into multifamily. That's the buzz of the real estate industry. Some people want to do single family. Some people want to do wholesaling. Some people want to fix and flip. I like to buy real estate and develop it. Get the entitlement approval. Raise the value. There's all different types of markets, but you have to go in there and try the different flavors just as if you were walking into an ice cream store. You may not like retail after you try it one time. So you want in step number three, to really establish the market types that you want to get into. Item four is what are your strengths? You want to show your strengths, right? I always believe in presentation, presentation, presentation. Real estate's location, location, location. But when you want to get somebody's attention, you got to go your 3XP. You got to do a presentation that knocks your socks off. Strengths, you want to identify your strengths. I recommend presenting your strengths in what I call as a one sheet. Different than a business card. Most of the time people take your business card and toss it into the can. You want to be you in a box. You want a one sheet. You want to do something creative. 
different than everybody else. You want to differentiate yourself. What are the micro distinctions of your strengths? Who is your team? But step number four is you want to be able to identify your strengths so that when you're speaking, you speak to your strengths, you know what you know, you have people that support your weaknesses, and you go in with a team approach. It's all about the approach. It's all about asking people what they want and then giving them what they want. That is the key for step number four. Step number five is company profile, and if you can put it together, a quick little deck couple pages on what your history has been, what you're doing, what your plan is. You want to be able to convey your business plan, what your profile is, and really understand what you're doing so you can explain it to people. There's nothing more important to be able to exemplify confidence in what you're doing. Confidence, certainty in what you're doing. You want to be certain because when you're 100% certain, people feel confidence in your work product and that's key. And that's why we want to focus on that step. Step number six is start to think about the company name. That's right. You are now ready to start the LLC. And the beauty of starting your own company is that anything that you spend money on your education, on your learning, getting around, travel, talking on the phone are now expenses that you can write off with your new company. So you pick the name, Send it out, you can create a logo, and you get ready to start that LLC. And the biggest thing is the next step, and that's opening up the bank account. Step number seven, opening up the bank account is so key because you actually now create a place to receive revenue. If you don't have a place to receive revenue, you've heard me say this before, when that revenue is ready to be handed to you and you don't have a place to accept it because the check's written in the company name, but you don't have a bank account, you're going to be a little upset and you're going to be holding that check. And that check is going to be like burning a hole in your pocket. So make sure you get the bank account set up because you can literally sign that check. And with today's technology, take a picture of that check and instantly that money will be in your bank account. And that's what you want to be set up to do. You want to be ready to receive, right? Open to receive that money. That is a critical step in the process that I want to emphasize for you today. The next step is the one that I like and why I'm talking to you right now. The social proof and establishing a website. There's so many people out there. You can get a website done for a few hundred dollars and you should start shooting your own videos. I'm not kidding you. Shooting your own videos is going to get you to be a good public speaker. It's going to give you certainty. It's going to give you confidence. Shoot a video, interview somebody, start that social proof, open up an Instagram account, open up LinkedIn, open up Facebook, mirror and model the mentors on your social media. Get that social presence, get that website, start to think about lead generation into the market that we just went to the ice cream store to figure out what flavor you like. That's right. Little social proof is necessary because when you're pitching yourself in today's world, I didn't think it was a key factor, but yes, people in today's world look at your social proof. So you want to make sure that you, in step number eight, get social proof and set up your website. Step number nine, we talked about the market. Now you have to pick the market that you want to focus on. I told you to go out and try 35 flavors. Maybe there's seven, maybe there's eight. You don't want to dive into every single market right off the bat. You want to pick one or two markets to get focused on. I even suggest learning one market at a time. If you're going to go into single family home, you want to pick areas that you would focus on. Learn the pricing in that market. If you want to go into a commercial market, you may want to pick a certain county or a certain state. Focus on a certain market. What you're learning in that first market will apply to another market in most cases with slight variances. But the basic principles of selecting the market and focusing on it is when you get into the details. So you've looked at the broad picture on the different markets. You've now honed in to, on what you want to start to identify as your specialty over time. What does this lead to? This helps in establishing what your criteria is. When you start talking to people, they're going to go, hey, Ken, what do you want to do? Well, I want to get into multifamily. I want to buy properties that range from 1 million to 5 million that have 50 units plus. 
you're now articulating your criteria so that people know so that they can go out and look for what you need. And this is real important. Understanding all the variety of markets, then honing in on the target markets and becoming a specialist in each one of your markets. Now let's get into step 10. And this is super key. All of these steps have to be in constant execution. I always tell people, learning is great. A lot of the learning has to be done on your own, especially when you get into real estate. There isn't a lot of training, so you got to be able to teach yourself. Ideally, you can go on YouTube, see people like myself, read books. There's several different ways to learn. But what I want to emphasize today in step 10 is execution. You want to be executing what you learn. If you're not executing what you're learning, if you're not practicing what you're learning, you're not going to get into habits. You're not going to be strengthening the muscle. You have to execute, execute, execute. As you execute, you ultimately want to know where you started from. So you have to establish a basis before you start. Now, we just talked about starting your own business. You may be at the start now, but after one year, that's another start. So you want to always know where your basis is. So when you execute and then measure, you can see the improvements that's taken place. And then you take massive action at all times. So it's learn, execute, take massive action. That's step number 10. And the final thing after doing those 10 steps is guess what? It's celebration. You celebrate and then you rinse and repeat those 10 steps again. And that's really the key. You take those 10 steps, you will be in business. And the advantages of being in business is now you get all the write-offs off your taxable income. And if you're not in business, it doesn't make sense. Everybody should be in business. And the real estate business is where you should be in. Why? Because 9 out of 10 millionaires are in the real estate business. This is Ken Van Lu leaving you with some tips, 10 steps to get started in real estate. If you like what you see, please subscribe to the channel and check out my social media, TikTok and Instagram and make it a great day.